Hold. Um, the green block is in frame again. Ooh, so it is. How annoying. Hello and welcome back to the Single Malt Review for our final episode of our Now versus Then comparison series. Mm. Brought to you by Heiner's Birthday Party Tasting. Mm, recycled through the lens of the Single Malt Review and brought mm. to the globe. So please... Um, a round of applause for Heiner. I'm not sure what age he turned. I'm sure it was significant, mm-hmm. though, because this is one hell of a tasting. Yes. So um, let's dig into the final one yeah. here, which could be, which could be, the last one was pretty, whoa, it was pretty interesting, Highland Park, but mm. this one, a historical bottle of Talisker. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be something to look at that's, as well. The internet tends to overuse the word iconic, like a celebrity changes their haircut and suddenly mm-hmm. it's iconic. But in the annaled halls of whiskey fame, Talisker is surely an iconic brand. It, it is. is one of the um, one of the founding one of the one of the knights at the table mm. um, when Diageo founded the classic malts, possibly yeah. the most um, powerful cabal of malt whiskies in the <laughs> world. Um, along with and it says it right here on the bottle: Glen Kinchy, Dalvinny, Craig and Moore, Oban, and Lagavulin. Mm. The um, yeah, the, 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 the Marvel's Avengers of the, the Scotch whiskies um, originally assembled way, way, way back in the day. And this mm. is this is a bottle from that primordial yes. time. So Diageo joints in both cases. There was no um, change in ownership over over that time hence, which makes it um, pretty, you know, like, that, that's a, that's a, considering the amount of musical chairs involved in the ownership of who owns who in Scotch whiskey distilling, um, that's a, that's a good innings um, for it to still be, be under one brand, so mm-hmm. well done, I guess, to Talisker there. Um, otherwise, the taxonomy is remarkably similar. They are both the most curious of all yep. strengths, the extremely made up um, <laughs> 45.8% mm. ABV, which is, I mean, that's good. That's no slouch. That's way better than, well, that's 5.8% better than 40%, uh, which is fine by me. Uh, but the exact significance of that percentage, you'd have to ask someone yeah. else. If such a thing exists, I'll bet they'll, I'll bet that someone's retroactively said, oh, it's something about the latitude and longitude of the island. And you go, ooh, mm-hmm. hushed tones. Mm-hmm. But anyway, what it is is a pretty good bottling yeah. strength. You could do a lot worse. Um, so I've got the older one here, mm. and this looks to me a great deal like a duty-free bottle because mm. it's a litre. And I think this is looking, this looks, this has all the hallmarks of sort of a late 90s today. Yeah. So I think they kept that style on for quite a while. This is very similar to our first bottle of Telescope I bought, which would have been 2009, 2010 or so. Yes, indeed. And and Dave's got the very snazzy, the the very, very contemporary bottling. The very zhuzh. Yeah. I, I quite like it. It's lovely, lovely blue mm. made by the sea. Yeah. Um, that must be cheap. You don't even have to pay the sea. Um <laughs> Uh, contemporary mm. bottling. This one, I should also add, this one's been through the walls. This one's looking mm. downright beat on top, but um, <laughs> never it mind. It has adventured. Yeah. So, let's see what we have mm. got going on. I didn't blow up any corks. That's really yeah. good. I thought I'd destroy at least one of them with these right, old bottles. The modern Talisker does have a big old chunk of cork floating in it, sadly, but none of it made it into our glasses, so... Oh, remarkable. Yeah. Okay, I oh, dodged a bullet there. Mm. Okay, here we are. Alrighty. The classic Talisker 10. So we'll have a look at the colour, and I'm going to call that exactly mm. the same. Nothing I to do in there. I believe it's artificially coloured in both cases. I so believe so, good. sadly. Chill yeah. filtered as well. Yep. Alrighty, now we can dispense with bottles. Mm-hmm. Let's clear these away. Let's have a calibration sip mm. of the newer, of the, the Which more was recent. this one, right? It was. One. Excellent. Okay. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's telescope. Yeah, as I Pete. Yep. It's nice. As I said, as I got cool as I got our yeah. single a single victory from the blind tasting <laughs> that telescope. Telescope. You know it. You love it, or you don't. I don't know. Um, doesn't matter. What has changed? That's what we're here to find out. You mm. know what? There's not a huge difference. That's no. It's uh, it's more <sighs> subdued nose on the classic. I think there's a bit more tang. Yeah. There's a bit more elasticity to that one, but. I think of all of them, mm. this one is showing the most consistency, at yeah. least in the aroma. At least in the aroma. Maybe a bit more depth sweetness, I think, probably, as the through line has always been, a bit more sherry influence in the Ooh. older version. Way less peat, yeah. Mm. It's there, but it's not as um, a full oh, yes, front indeed. and center. Okay, mm. yep. The nose may have been similar. Ooh. In terms of the palate, this is one of the more different ones we've had. Um, two things are at work here. 
one, the peat seems to have genuinely dropped off. The other thing, and possibly the more major thing, sherry influence. Yeah. This is a sherry dram. Mm. This is sherry all the way down. This is amazing. I, I haven't tasted Talisker yeah. like this ever. I've tasted mm. quite a lot of independent Taliskas, but they're almost uniformly uh, bourbon or refill bourbon, more likely. And so it's a very light bodied, very peat forward, tangy, zesty kind of a mm. thing. This is really, really rich. This and is sumptuous. one of those least sort of dusty or duty sort of uh, hemp sort of influence. Yeah, looking at the bottle, I think Compared this might be, be, very classic, might be classic slightly ones. more modern yeah. from some of our other ones. It's still I mean, not modern enough to have the website linked on it, which most of them do, so that's a good... Well, I mean, it's, it's still, you know, it's still pretty much 30 years mm. old, so we're saying we're saying more modern, but yeah. it's still pretty jolly old. Um, but, yeah, the sherry on this, I will add a little bit of water, but this is... Oh, 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 wow. This could that be is, a real score mm, golf about to happen here. That has gone places. I was hoping for a bit more controversy yeah. here, but they, they've actually um, grumbled, though one might, about the mm. um, sort of the which way Scotch whiskey's going, whether it's getting better or worse. I think the consistency that's been maintained over these whiskies that we've tasted is pretty admirable considering um, just how much has changed mm. um, in the way whiskey is, uh, is made over... They're, for me, they're more similar than some of the others have been, but I'm enjoying the classic even more than the, the modern. The classic is so good. Yeah. I think that that sherry element mm. gives it a depth. And I think marginally less peat. And a richness and a sweetness. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's less peat or whether it's just more other flavor mm. competing, competing um, yeah. with the peat that makes the peat seem a little more subdued. Mm. And it has turned it from a whiskey I like to a whiskey I rather love. Yeah. Um, this one, this one is doing it for me. Mm. Um, this one is really doing it for me. I am quite certain we have scored Talisco in the past, mm. and I'm sure it didn't get, I'm sure it was no slouch, but scoring this one today, and this will be a, a proof of my um, scoring consistency, I would give it an 87. Mm. This one... This is a 91. Wow. This is really, really good whiskey, and it's really, really sumptuous. It's generous whiskey. Mm. It's got so much to give. Um, it's not holding anything back. And I can really only put that down to just changes, changes mm. in wood, changes in how um, sherry wood has gotten scarce and hard to come by. Yeah. Because the otherwise, it, it seems pretty similar. You know, the, like the through line of Talisker to Talisker seems... Um, pretty indicative it's just this one has more it has this whole mm. other module the segment of flavor that's been sectioned into it and it's just yeah talisker plus mm. i guess whereas with most of these whiskies were found that the contemporary versions have more nuance and individual character mm. with um this one i think the the classic has a is a deeper richer uh, whiskey experience i think it, it I think mathematically, mm. yes. I think yeah. you'd be hard-pressed to argue against that. So for my scores, I would rate the contemporary Talisker 10 a fair 89. It is one of the classics for a region. A reason, pardon me. The, also uh, for a region. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. You tell it's late in the day. Anyway, and but the um, the classic bottling, the classic Talisker 10 is up to 90 for me. Mm -hmm. It is even better. It's top tier. Just It has extra juice to it. It's just got so much more going on compared to an already very good contemporary whiskey yeah interesting interesting i think that's almost mm. that is almost a 50 50 ones that we've liked the modern version versus mm. ones we've liked the older version yeah which kind of throws the throws the 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 whiskey grumble <laughs> rhetoric into maybe something of something something of a disarray because mm. yeah generally when i think about it and this is probably just prejudice of everything used to be better and everything's all crap <laughs> now mm. um maybe i'm just watching too much television um <laughs> but um certainly my gut reaction is that oh whiskey used to be better hmm. and i think on balance, thinking of other older ones, and I think I might be thinking of, um, I might be putting too much weight on blends because mm. I will, I will die on this hill that blended whiskey has gotten fundamentally worse, mm. um, worse mm. across the board, and the cheaper you go, the worse it's gotten. Right, um, and that I have much more currency with because I have been known to scoop up 
um, older blended whiskey at auction because it's often quite cheap mm. because no one cares or wants mm-hmm. it. Um, and so I do that as purely a, a value pick. But um, yeah, that, that I will say, um, hand on heart, blended whiskey ain't what it used to be. Mm. But these single malt examples, obviously, they, they demonstrate that that, um, that uh, rigid thinking doesn't always apply because yeah, in at least two of the cases, we found the more modern example mm. to be better. So that's that's something to think about. Yeah, that's interesting though, because I think my bias is skewed in a totally different direction to yours. Whereas I think that um, in general, older whiskey, older single malts, even are going to be perhaps less nuanced, less um, sort of refined compared to the modern examples. Because things like, say, a craft whiskey consumer today is going to care about is it majority bourbon cask or majority mm. sherry? Is it one cask type or the other? Whereas I think back to the eighties or nineties. And I imagine the average whiskey drinker not really caring. Like they would say, I like X brand, therefore I'm going to buy and yeah. drink that. I, I think that I think that through line works mm. um, works quite succinctly yeah. too. I think it was a a curious time where mm. the resources to make good whiskey were profoundly abundant, mm. but the palate for them was not. Yeah, um, and so it's this weird Willy Wonka's wonderland of mm-hmm. sometimes you got just magically awesome stuff uh, because that was simply what was around you Mm. know we were the 90s was only a few years out of the whiskey crash of the 80s people just Mm -hmm. didn't know what they have if they had a time machine in the 90s and they could see how things went Mm. um how things went oh my goodness if they'd seen the if they'd seen the 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 ruinous future of yeah, whiskey how prices things are going to go, yeah, that we currently live in, um, they probably would have been a bit more reserved mm. with just how just what stocks they dipped into yeah. to producing whiskey. But it was a different time, mm. um, and maybe in a in a weird confluence of things, that's why we got so much good whiskey in the nineties because mm. the game was not a game of rarity like it is now like mm. it is artificially or otherwise been crafted into the game was i need to make my whiskey a bit better than the guy over the fence yeah. so it sells um and people were thinking about it completely differently it wasn't the commodity as it's today mm. and so it was more it was more in the in the vein of say cheese selling i've got to make the best cheese and sell it for you know the, the correct amount of money so that mm. people buy my bloody cheese and I go to go out of business. Um, there was not this. This is all the nature of the gods, and we're going to um, tap into the ultra rich, who which price mm. does not even matter, um, and so our prices don't have to matter, and so that'll be a million pounds, please. Um, <laughs> the, the, this horrible future that we've inherited. Mm. Um, so I think the '90s was an intrinsically more random time in whiskey making. Um, and yeah, I, I just wish I was, I just wish I was more of a boozy child, I suppose, because <laughs> imagine, imagine mm. the drams I could have enjoyed. Oh, I think <laughs> that would be the first thing I'd do if we built a time machine, we'd just do, do nothing but buy whiskey and, <laughs> um, flog it off in the future. Hmm. Oh, the dream. The infinite money cycle. I mean, yeah. yes, people would probably say, well, there aren't, there aren't there other things you do with the time machine? I'd say, well, yes, but first, you know, <laughs> Hitler can wait. I've got whiskey to buy. All right. Okay. This is getting silly now, and I can see a 15 on the camera, so we're going to sign off here. Thank you very much for coming along with this um, quite unique whiskey oh. journey. It is not one we are ever going to go on no. again, because these whiskies are not just scarce, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, they, these whiskies will, even more so, never, never see the light of day mm. again, so we are immensely privileged to be able to yeah. experience them and waffle on about them for these as long as kind we have. Of Time capsule tastings are just such a rare and valuable experience. Getting to know what this same whiskey tasted like decades in the past, seeing how it's changed, what influences are there, what the passage of time has done to a single bottle. It is truly a, a proper museum piece experience. Indeed. So, once again, cheers, Heiner. Happy mm. birthday. Thank you for sharing your tasting with the world. I hope they found that of some use. And again, I am... Um, uh, terribly sorry for filming <laughs> the blinds in slow motion but i've i've fixed that i've fixed that so that's okay that will have been explained in a prior video so mm. everyone will be caught up all right slanger stick around we're going to have something really big for christmas this year and i mean big so strap in for that one stay puckered